mulks are over and the chances are that if you're watching this video you're either relieved that they went okay or absolutely gutted that they didn't go to plan but let me tell you this your mock result does not define what your final a level grade will be in fact they can be the ultimate tool to help you to improve your grade so in this video i'm going to show you exactly how to turn your mock grade whether it was good or bad into a rock solid strategy to help you get the grade you're after in the final exams in june make sure you stay with me right until the end because i'm going to be sharing with you a bonus tip that could make a huge difference to your biology a-level revision strategy so step number one let's talk about reflection you need to invest some time now reflecting on your mock if you haven't done so already you might have done this in lesson with your teachers and even if you have i'd say reflect on it again the sorts of things to be doing are review what you wrote carefully against the mark scheme look at where you did and didn't get marks to first of all identify any gaps in your knowledge are there any topics that stand out that you repeatedly lost marks on next then also have a look at exam technique so were there any skills that were costing you marks so it might be things like the maths questions it could be application questions it could be critical analysis and if you haven't already seen my marks analysis video i'll link it up here so you can have a look in this video i give a detailed way that you can analyze your mock papers to really scrutinize which exam technique and skills are losing you the most marks the final thing to reflect on is your study habits and this is where you need to be really brutally honest with yourself thinking back do you feel that you put in enough time consistent effort and the correct types of revision strategies to enable you to make the maximum amount of progress you're capable of or did you just cram last minute so have a think about all of this but write it all down this analysis and reflection is the blueprint for your improvement and we're going to use all of that to come up with a personalized strategy for you to make the maximum amount of progress this is going to be key to making sure that you invest your energy in the correct areas focusing on your weakest topics focusing on your weakest skills and it is really really important that you do actively write this down write down what you lost the most marks on and what you're going to do to improve about it so if it's knowledge it could be picking up particular topics that you are going to do flashcards on repeatedly every week for the next month if it's application you might say you're going to watch my application skills video follow the tips in that and then do lots of application questions and i've got free bundles of application questions on my website on the freebies tab but the key is write this down and not only that write it down on a piece of paper that you can then stick above your laptop computer whatever device you use when you're sitting down to do work and the reason for this is studies show that first of all people that write down their goals and ideas for improvement are more likely to improve and in fact studies show they do improve more as well as that studies also show that if you have your goals up in front of you meaning you are repeatedly being reminded of them and you don't forget them again you're more likely to stay on track and remember to do whatever it is that you've said you're going to do to improve step number two is building a targeted study plan now that you've analyzed and reflected on your performance we're going to use this to create a detailed and personalized study plan so here's how to do it and i partly mentioned this in the one before but number one is when you're coming up with your plan you have to prioritize what you find hardest and what are your weak areas you basically need to eat the frog you need to do the bits that you don't like the most first the bits that you find the hardest first don't avoid them i know it's all too easy to stick to the bits that you're good at because it gives you that boost in confidence that you can do it whereas if you do the sections of theory or exam technique that you find harder it can be really demotivating to see that repeatedly you're still not improving and still not gaining those marks but that's why you have to keep at it because sometimes it takes multiple times of practicing seeing no improvement before you suddenly see that improvement so don't give up and focus on the areas that you lose the most marks on so you need to be ruthless with yourself and focus on those hardest parts so number two then within this revision strategy plan is coming up with what you will actually do and you might have seen me talk about this several times now i hope you have because that means you now know exactly what to do but there's three steps you need to make sure you understand the theory or the skill you need to make sure you remember the theory and you need to practice and within the remembering that usually takes up at least 40 percent of the time so to remember all of that theory you have to be doing consistent 
active recall. So things that you could be doing are blurting, you could be using flashcards, you could be testing each other in a group, you could even use my active recall workbook, which if you haven't seen that, I'll do a little screen recording here, but just so you know, every single Thursday at 8 p.m. I go live on YouTube covering a different topic, doing exam style questions and testing knowledge using my active recall workbook. So that could just be one quick way that you can instantly add in 20 to 30 more minutes of revision a week, so that's how long it is, by coming along to those sessions. Number three within this plan is make sure you are consistent. So don't just leave revision to chance or when you have a spare minute or hour you think, oh, I'm just gonna do a bit of revision now. You need to actively create a timetable of when you are going to do this revision to improve from your mocks because you're in the situation now where you're not only revising and trying to improve what you learned last year in the first half of year 13, you're also learning the rest of the content. So you need to come up with a way to balance this. Now, if you are struggling to come up with a way to balance revising year 12 alongside learning year 13 and knowing what you should revise each week, I did actually create a generic long-term revision planner that goes from January to June. I think there's also a tab where it's Easter till June as well. And it's only 99p. It's on my website. I've got it for AQA and OCRA. So that could be a good start point for you. However, if you are going to get that, I do highly recommend you tweak it to personalize it so you spend more time focusing on the topics that you find hardest. Now, the amount of time to spend, it varies every week, how much homework, what else you have going on. But the ideal would be aiming to do at least 90 minutes, four to five times a week, which yes, that is quite a lot. But we are now in the final six months, I think it is, maybe five months by the time you see this video, left until you do your exams. So it's this final push, really putting in that consistent hard work to make those improvements. And if you're struggling to think, where am I gonna get this extra 90 minutes from? Start utilizing what was beforehand, maybe dead time, whether that's your journey to and from school. Maybe it's you've got a quick 20 minutes before you go and have dinner. Find little pockets of time, which are otherwise just wasted mindlessly scrolling on TikTok or just sat on a bus, whatever it might be, and use them for effective study to make these improvements. The last part of this plan is making sure you are testing yourself regularly. What I suggest is you actually, within your timetable, schedule your own personal mini mock assessments. And that could be one little mock every two weeks. And if you're wondering how on earth do I make a mini mock, I've got these on my website for free. I've got end of topic unit tests. I have got mock papers, order them for free on the freebies page, download those, pick and choose which are going to fit with what you're doing for your current revision. And and sit these tests in exam conditions, mark them, review the marks you've got, and aim to start to see small increases every time you're doing these mini tests every two weeks or every four weeks if you feel you're too pushed for time. But the key here is frequent tests so you've got that accountability on yourself to see are you improving, and also so you can measure that you are making improvements and to continually reflect whether you have made improvements on particular skills or topics and whether you need to readjust your vision plan. Okay, so part three then in terms of how you can improve from your mocks is dealing with disappointment. Let's address the elephant in the room here. What should you do if your mocks were an absolute disaster? Firstly, you are not your grade. You are not a disaster just because you didn't do very well in a mock paper. Mocks are simply a snapshot of your current ability or a reflection of the amount of effort you put in in December or January whenever it is that you did your mock. They are not what you will definitely get in June. And the fact that you are here watching this video and you are already at least 10 minutes into this video tells me that you are serious about improving. And that is one of the biggest steps in making the improvement. So in terms of building up your confidence and building up this positive mindset, focus on your small wins and achievements. Any slight improvement that you see, you should be celebrating that. Try and focus on one tricky topic per week. Try and do one test every two weeks. You need to build this momentum over time. And if you stick at it, you will truly be shocked at what you are able to achieve with consistent, effective work. 
Now, if you are really struggling with the motivation, I do want to just put in a reminder that I have a study group, which is there designed to support and motivate. So this biology study club that I run, it's a monthly club, an alternative to tuition. And yes, it does include 10 live lessons. I mark your work. I set you challenge exam questions. You also get mock papers marked and set by me. You also get the opportunity to win all of my resources for free. You also get some of my resources for free, but pushing all of that aside, you get a supportive study community. There are lots of like-minded students who really want to improve and are so genuinely kind and supportive that that has been the number one thing I've had feedback from for the students in the club. They said all of what I just described is amazing at helping them to improve, but what they hadn't realised was just how much impact having a supportive group of students has had on their confidence in lessons at school and also at home and also to motivate them when they're feeling like they can't do it or they're not very good. They just put it in the study chat and there's always someone, whether it's me or another student, to help boost their confidence, suggest a way to improve and just to help them. So if you do feel like you need that extra push, I'll put the link in the description below and I'd love to see you in the club so I can cheer you along as well. And now we get to the end point, my bonus tip to help you with your biology A-level revision strategy. The final tip then is how you need to change your strategy in the final weeks leading up to the exams. So if you are creating a long-term plan, when it comes to May, you need to change your plan of action. When you get to that point in May, you should be at the stage where you understand pretty much everything and you can remember almost everything. So when you are doing your weekly fortnightly tests, or you might now be doing past papers, you need to make sure you are doing them in exam conditions. And by that, I mean, you need to give yourself some times where you're doing the entire two hour paper in exam conditions uninterrupted with no distractions as if it is the actual exam so that you get used to having to test yourself without any backup of looking up a resource the actual timed conditions and having to write and think for two hours solid as well as that you really need to be putting in the time into examining the mark scheme carefully and so many times students who are self-marking their papers do it incorrectly and that's why i made this video here explaining how to use the mark scheme, which if you haven't watched, please do watch it because I go through exactly what all the symbols, terminology and annotations mean so that you can accurately mark your exam papers or past papers to get a true reflection of what you are doing really well and what you still need to improve on. And lastly, don't forget the essay. If you take AQA, the essay is worth almost 10% of your entire A-level grade. So it's so important that you feel confident and prepared for this. And that's why I've got an entire playlist on my YouTube channel about the essay. And if you watch all of those videos, that gives you everything you need to potentially get full marks on the essay. So start to invest time from now, but particularly in the last month, in improving and understanding your essay skills. And I'll have a lot more of that coming up for 2025. All of my essay YouTube videos again, as well as some bonuses to help you improve. So there you have it. That is my step-by-step -step plan of how you can bounce back from your mock grade and turn it into your road roadmap to success for June. I hope you found it helpful and if you did don't forget to like and subscribe and next week make sure you're here because I'm going to be telling you how you can improve by two grades in the final five months.